Hello YouTube family, this is Adam from Alaska Cut the Cord and as many of you saw you watched our shooting air guns in Alaska video and it was pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie, I was really impressed. I was impressed so much that I went out and made a significant purchase of my own. Not one of the guns that was there, but one that I researched and it really looked like it's gonna suit my needs the best. Here's what I purchased. It's a Hotson. Hotson is made in Turkey. Hotson is known for having high quality barrels, um, which is something that accuracy more than multiple rounds down range is what I'm always looking for. So let's see what we got. Come join us out here. This is a Hotson pile driver, if you haven't already guessed. And there you are. This is a 457 caliber, has its own onboard tank. It is, let's see, we've got a bolt here that you pull back for loading. We're not going to cock it just yet. It's got an adjustable cheek rest on it. And there is your gauge, which is, as you can see, it's already charged up. I got it I got it charged when I bought it. So what else does it come with? Um, it's got your typical warnings. Um, the warnings. And, and I do read all of these. Um, it is important to, well, I don't know what language that's in. Turkish, I would assume. Um, and then all of these have to have their... There's a little, there's a little kit here. This little brass piece goes on the end of your airline so you can actually fill the rifle. And it comes with several different O-rings, which is all part of a maintenance kit for it. And we've got more O-rings here, which on air rifles is, that is your maintenance of the air rifle. So, are you ready for this? There's some other parts that go with it. Okay, so as you might have guessed, there's a few accessories, but let me explain something to you first. This is a 457 caliber, which is nine millimeters, so to speak. Now, what I've got here is kind of a comparison. This is a Seneca bullet right here. These are solid lead, no boat tail, um, at 300 grains. This is a Mr. Hollow Point round at 365 grains and for comparison this little gold one here is a 17 cal um, a lot of your your normal pellet guns are 17 cal and that happens to be a gold plated round for faster feet per second <clears throat> in addition to that this gun is going to get a donny fl um, suppressor on it i'll show you that Okay, there's your Downey FL, says right on it, for use with air guns only. Of course, in the name of accuracy, we're going to be putting in Athlon rifle scope, um, which is, in my opinion, maybe a little bit overkill for this gun. It's, I don't know, this is a 6x24x50 by by radical. Um, so it's, you can really, really reach out there with this, probably farther than the gun can. And then because of the size of the aperture, I've got the high mount 30 millimeter scope rings for it. And this, this gun being a 457, I think you're only going to get between four and six rounds before you have to air up again. Um, we also purchased a air venturi tank um, that way i've got an external bottle that i can tether to and this is going to give you probably another 16 rounds um, in the name of being off grid and that's exactly where we are an air rifle offers kind of a unique experience to that um, not only can you buy a air pump or an air compressor that runs off 12 volt or 120 volt, they even make a hand pump where you can hand pump this up. So if you can supply your own air 
and you have access to bullet molds, they have to be precise, not any bullet mold, you can actually make your own bullets. So you've got the bullets, you've got the propellant, which is air, and uh, without further ado, let's put this thing together. Okay, well, here we go. This is the gun completely assembled. Um, it's got the scope, which is also has a lighted reticle. Um, it's a really awesome scope. I just think it might be a bit much for an air rifle. And then it's got the great Kami Donny FL suppressor on the end. Um, and I did have this adapter pre-installed. It just screws on, screws off. So if I were gonna take this hunting, I would actually, just to make this a little bit more manageable, and I'll show you how long it is here, I would actually take this off and put the thread protector back on. Um, but let's let's get a quick measurement because it looks kind of ridiculous. So the actual length from the chamber to the end of the barrel is about 34 and a half inches, okay? So that's a that's a good length barrel as far as accuracy goes but then you go ahead and add on another 14 and a quarter for an overall length the overall length of the gun is just under 62 inches which phyllis isn't that about how tall you are oh sorry my bad <laughs> In any case, um, what we're going to do now, because I have not fired this weapon, I'm kind of excited about it. Um, we're going to take this out and we're going to shoot at my least favorite cast iron pan. And we're going to do a comparison of the 17 cal and then the 457. Ready? Go. Okay, so earlier we compared the 17 cal with the new hot sun pile driver. And over there, I've got a frying pan that I'm gonna use at a target um, because I hate that frying pan. And uh, we're gonna kind of compare what the two do. And I'm also gonna show you the difference between using a suppressor and not using a suppressor as far as the sound volume. So let's do this one first. This is a, a Gamo. Um, I've had this a ton of years. It actually, it got all rusty and was pretty much wrecked and I cleaned it all up. Hold on, airplane. Okay. okay. So, the first gun that we're gonna use, airplanes, right over our head. Are you serious? It's like they know. Okay, after okay. that rant. <laughs> okay, so the first gun that we're gonna use, just because I come. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> this is the third airplane in a row. Now, with this style of gun, there's no CO2. The compressed air comes from a brake action. So you break it open, that compresses a spring that's gonna release the air all in one shot. You load your pellet there in the chamber. And with all pellet guns, all air rifles, it's on safe when this tab is back. I don't know why they do that, but it's fire when it's at that point. So we'll put it on safe. We'll take aim at our little frying pan. This is not very convenient at all. Hmm. I don't know if I can do this. Let's try it. Okay, here we go. I heard it. You heard that hit? I pinked. 
As long as I'm taking shots at it, I might try to actually... I was going to say you're a little low and to the left. Yeah, definitely. Don't forget we have a breeze. Yeah, it's not going to matter at this distance. Oh. I'll take a second shot just to make sure it's consistent. And it wasn't you? Right. As it could be. So again, we'll break the gun open. Insert it around. Make sure it's seated. Get on our uncomfortable stand. Nah, I'd say she's pretty good. I'll take one more just to be sure. Oh, I dropped pellets in the groove. It's not convenient. I'm using the, these are actually, these rounds are um, by Gamo. They're Raptors and they're gold plated. The gold plated rounds give you an extra 200 feet per second muzzle velocity. And they're not that expensive. Not like gas or something like that. You know. Lumber. Or lumber, yeah. You've made a nice triangle. She seems kind of random. Huh. Okay. Well, that's it. That's the Gamo 17 cal. Um, this scope is a real cheap pile of junk, so I think we'll probably put a nice scope on it. I used to have a deer rifle scope on it, and that was more accurate. Let's bring out the big boy. This is the Hotson pile driver. I have not zeroed this weapon. I have not fired this weapon, but some people look at the suppressor on there and wonder how much of a difference does that really make. We're going to take two shots with it. Once with it off and once with it on. So you can hear the difference. Now we're using the Seneca 300 grain bullets. And the way we load this, again I'm checking to make sure it's on safe first. And then this charging handle. What are we not doing? This should come back and lock. What stops me from locking? Is this thing screwing us up? Get. Why do we not come back farther? That's weird. I think it's already cocked. But I don't think it is. Well, let's... I don't know. Let's fire. Okay, what is the problem? What are we not doing? It just hits a dead stop. Oh, there. No, it cocked. Okay. Weird. It takes a lot to cock that. So, you just set your round in. You can push it ahead a little bit into the chamber, close it, it sets where it's at, we're on safe, we'll take our first shot. And this is without any suppressor, so it will be loud. I just took my, my snowshoes off. That's fine. Okay. Still, yeah. I don't know where it hit though. 
see. It looks like <coughs> lower right. Oh, it removed a part of the paint. Oh, goodness. Okay, that's okay. We got a... <laughs> Here, I thought we'd have a dented pan to take camping, but we're just not gonna, huh? No. Okay. So now, this time, we'll put the great Kami by Donnie FL can on there and we'll take another shot. Very gentle with these threads. All these pieces are aluminum and if you cross thread them it's forever. So but if you cross thread them you can't take it back off again. Well it you know they say you don't need Loctite if you cross thread. Exactly. So let's see. Tighten that up. Okay. Let's get ready for that. Oh, she is quite the pull. That was my problem earlier. <clears throat> okay, we adjusted the scope a little bit. Parallax set at 50 yards. Push it forward. You are on fire. We are on safe. No, you are on safe. Okay, let's see if we're a little closer to the center of the pan this time. And this one should be significantly quieter. What? You're not, you, not close at all. Where was it? See that chunk of snow off to the, to the left? left? Yep. Wow. Okay. She moved a lot more than I thought. Significantly quieter though, huh? Oh, goodness. Um. Yeah. So how many shots can you get off that little tank? Probably about four. Before it starts losing enough pressure that it starts changing the trajectory. And then that's why that other tank, you'll tether in, you'll fill it up, you'll go from there. So, let's take one more shot, see if we can put it on metal. Safe. Firing. Oh. Wow. I don't know if it's the suppressor that is drastically affecting. I've heard that a suppressor will improve the shooting significantly, um, the ballistics of it. But, and, and I think that's what we're actually experiencing, why it's so different. So we are going to bring it right. A few more clicks. And we're going to bring it up. We're going to take one more shot and then, let's see, where's our air pressure at? And it's the middle of the road. Okay. So, I'm a little confused as to where we're shooting now. So I raised it a bunch. Um, you're going to have to watch it real close, but okay. So, we've topped the tank off um, after a few rounds there, and we're going to take another shot, see if we are on target or not. Going to the left. Low and to the left. Not as low. You're about halfway in between. Is that getting easier? No. 
No? Oh, okay. So oh, it's, it's not, you're not going to accidentally load it? No. No, no you're not okay. going to accidentally cock it. It's not going to accidentally do anything. Okay. There we are. We're on safe. Another adjustment. About oh, halfway between the last one. And you're a little bit left. What is going on? Why are it... You came up. Did it come up? Yeah. Why is it so far off? I have to get on the plate. I don't normally have to adjust this one. Okay, let's see. So will it not let you if you're unsafe? It's, you have it on this O-ring here. It's wrecking the O-ring. It's cutting it. There's nothing else here. I don't know. Okay, well, not sure if you could tell there, but the shooting the gun went fine. But I got about three shots out of it and I started kind of having an issue. I started to have an issue, honestly, right away. And that is with the cocking lever. Um, at first it wouldn't move, wouldn't move. And then lo and behold, it worked. And then the next time it worked fine. And there's a lot of pressure on it. You're pushing back a gas piston, a nitrogen piston in the back. And then I went to take one last shot and it doesn't move. It is locked up tight. It'll, it'll move back to a certain point and there is a mechanical failure. I wouldn't call it a catastrophic failure. Catastrophic failure is where the, the gun is done and you lost an eye. Um, that's not the case. It just, it will not cock. So you cannot put another round in the chamber. Um, I took it back to uh, Alaskan Air Guns and he's going to get me a new one. I don't know if this is a common happenstance with a Hudson rifle. I looked at other YouTube videos and I haven't seen this happen. So I guess we're kind of done for the time being until I get it back and then we'll, we'll, we'll continue with it. But like I told him, I no longer trust the firearm. And when I don't trust the firearm, I won't carry it in the woods with me because it'll fail when I need it. So. He's either going to get me a new one or I'm going to get a different air rifle because I'm $1,100 for three rounds is too much. So kind of a disappointing review of the rifle. Um, I hate to have to do that, but I'm not being paid by them and I didn't get anything for free. So I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, overall quality of the gun seems pretty good, um, but I'm not impressed with this. How that can fail right out of the box we got some serious quality control issues, so stay tuned. There will obviously be a follow-up episode here where I'll tell you what sort of resolution we had or if I have a completely different kind of rifle the next time you see me. So with that said, this is Adam from Alaska Cut the Cord. Love you, bye.